Hi, I'm Mac McCarthy, and I help people with their breakups. And today I'm going to break down, unpack a real breakup story that was sent in to rightmac.com. If you have a story you want to share on rightmac.com, send it in. Or if you'd like to book a live coaching session to fully unpack your breakup situation, book it. Let's get into it. This is a situation where you might have had it before. Your girlfriend's family members are a problem. Okay. And a lot of times what people don't realize is you're not going to change someone's family. It's built in. It's one of those things. A lot of things in your life you can change. A lot of things you can change about your habits, about your making money, about meeting new women. If you meet a woman, you fall in love with her, you're not going to change her family. Okay. You're not going to change that dynamic and you're not going to change and change the unconditional love that you can't understand how they overlook how bad a family member is to them. So let's get into it. Hello, Coach Mac. I broke up with my ex about two months ago, actually a little over two months ago. Okay. Uh, I'm 31 and she's 33. We met at work. I was attracted to her from the get-go and she knew that. I wasn't sure if she even liked me because some days she'd ignore me, but eventually I got her to go out with me and from there we built something real. So that's, you know, classic work together. Not sure if I like you. A lot of times work romance, sometimes you're not initially attracted to someone, but over time they grow on you. Uh, the fact that you're able to organically, authentically gain attraction for each other rather than just on a dating app stands for something. I think that these kinds of uh, courtships uh, build for a longer relationship because you really got to know each other a little bit before the relationship started. We had a lot in common. We are both only children. We both were originally from New York. Okay. I'm with you. I've had a few girlfriends before, but this relationship was different. It was it was just on from the beginning. We just clicked on all levels. There was minor there was minor issues with her mother needing money and a place to stay. So let's stop there. So he's identifying that as a minor issue in the beginning. Now, one of the things I've realized being a breakup coach for years now is minor issues in the beginning that kind of just get like, oh, it's okay, it's not that big a deal now. These are things that are not going away and they become bigger problems later on. So if the mom's a problem in the beginning or needs money, it could be a one time only thing, but most of the time it's going to happen again. And however that person treated the first, how treated their mother the first time, they're going to do it again. So if she was easy to give her money, you didn't think the circumstances were good. And the first time you're like, it's okay. Relationships kind of good. It's going to come back around again. Just be aware of that. History repeats itself, right? This is how it is. So, right. And this is why it's so good to write out your relationship because you can see the, when the pattern began. So, um, it's not that I didn't like that. So getting back to that sense, there was a mind, there were minor issues with her mother needing money in a place to stay. It's not that I didn't like that. It's just that the mother is an on again, off again, crystal meth head and can't be trusted. Well, there you go. Circumstances are, this isn't an individual that's truthful. This is a drug addict. Um, really crystal meth is a dangerous drug, let alone to deal with someone that's on again, off again. On the flip side, you or I are looking at it from a place of not having feelings for that individual. This is her mother, right? And so this, it creates a difficult situation because you look at it like, don't let a crystal meth head borrow money. That's ridiculous. Well, what if it's your mom, right? And you're like, my mom's not like that. Yeah, exactly. You can't put yourself in her shoes. See, it's difficult. I can see right through the lies, manipulation, but my girlfriend seemed to always get conned by her for money because it's her mother. Okay. Uh, eventually that would be a problem money, not just because the mom, eventually that would be a problem money, but not just because the mom, she made about 40% more money than I did and had a small trust fund from her dad that she could dip in on at any time. All right. So this is one of those things beginning of the relationship. You know, this, she obviously knows that she probably makes a little bit more money. It's not really an issue. Um, but over time when money comes up more and more and you've been in the relationship for a little while, it can become a problem, right? And usually not always a lot of times a person that makes more money, whether that's a man or a woman, 
holds a little bit more power in the relationship because so much is related to as you get into a long-term relationship, paying the bills, right? Paying for things. And if they're paying for more things, they would feel more power in the relationship to get their way. It's not absolutely true, but it's true most of the time. Uh, she never held this over my head as I've got a good career and will eventually move into a higher pay over the next few years. I know that I know that and she knows that. So a lot of times in the beginning of a relationship when it's rose petals and wine glasses, you probably wouldn't make it as big an issue. But over time, if she makes more money and expenses mount, it might become an issue. The fact I love the way you said, like, I'm going to level up with her. I do have a good career. Right. And that she respects. Again, this is why you write out your story, because you can you can kind of see the breadcrumbs of what has happened here. So uh, moving to a higher pay next few years. I know that and she knows that. But what happened was her stepsister, who's also a meth head, uh, stole some jewelry from her and somehow got her pin number and cleaned out all her savings. She wasn't broke, but it really hit her hard and made her paranoid about money and being used for money. Right. So this is one of those things. This is a traumatic experience with money. Right. Um, so while we were together for over three years, she usually always pay for expensive dinners and she'd pay mostly for our vacations. We also lived in her condo, which which I contributed to the mortgage and bills about 50 50. This was established as the norm as soon as I moved in and was never a problem. Of course, it worked for me, but once her sister hosed her, God, I haven't heard that word before, she got really catty about money and would make passive-aggressive statements about me not making much and that she was taking care of me like a mother to a teenager. All right, so this is the shift in the relationship, right? An event happened that changed her thinking, that changed her outlook, that scared her, and she probably doesn't realize that she's changing her behavior with you and you're feeling it on the flip side. It's never good to be in a situation where someone's paying for the expensive dinners and the vacations when it's not their pleasure to do so. And when they start throwing it in your face, you need to confront them, right? You need to confront them and say, if it's not your pleasure to do so, then don't do it. We got in a few fights over this because like I said, I was fine before and I was okay with paying for more stuff. She could just tell me what it was and she wanted to start paying more for. So this is classic feminine, masculine, women, men, uh, woman versus a man. A woman's going to hint more. She wants you to know this already. She doesn't want to have to tell you to pay for more things. Okay. Then something happened with my job where the company had to withhold pay for a couple of weeks. So I told her I'd be short my end of the bills that month. And she went nuts. From there, we started fighting over things I didn't know were an issue, such as her saying she was no longer intimately satisfied. Big one. Uh, and not in those words, I was crushed. So this might be a situation where money was a problem, but it wasn't the biggest problem. But the intimacy issue was a bigger problem. And she just wasn't able to tell you that. And then when you got in a fight, it bubbled up. And so sometimes people use petty things or things that you find like, where is this coming from? When in reality, there's another problem they just don't want to get into. And so my question to you would be, do you agree that you haven't been intimately satisfying her? Do you think that's accurate? Because you're in the bedroom with her. You're the one involved in that. Wouldn't you be able to know if that was true or not? And if it's not true, right, then you have to ask her, are you like, really, are you faking it? I didn't know how to react. I just locked myself in the office and cried. I can be emotional sometimes. Then she knocked on the door a couple hours later and apologized, but told me it was best we split up and that I could move out at the end of the month. I agreed with tears in my eyes and later sort of begged her to reconsider. So you got tears in your eyes, you're crying in the other room and you're begging her to reconsider. Not a good look for you. Uh, obviously emotions can't be held in. I do like that you're completing your emotions right? You're doing your crying in private. Uh, but you obviously care a lot more about the relationship and her than she does about you. And that's why she's ruling the relationship. If you're in this state where you just feel highly emotional, you definitely want to do that in private. 
regain your emotions before you have an interaction with her again. I agreed with tears in my eyes and later sort of begged her to reconsider. She didn't. So I moved to the studio apartment. I ended up actually having to borrow some money from her for a deposit on the studio, which she said was fine and understood completely. So the minute you moved out, this is, this is when the breakup gets really official after living together. The minute you had to ask for money, you just reinforced the fact that money's an issue and that she needs to support you. Now, that being said, this is what happens. A bad habit starts in the beginning of a relationship, gets dependent, and when you're dependent on someone, especially for something like money, uh, once a breakup come, be, comes, right, whatever you are dependent on that person for, such as money, becomes a bigger problem, right? So this is why, you know, in certain situations, oh, they were fine with it in the beginning, but not now. People change with circumstances. Um which was fine, understood completely. After watching your videos and some other coaches on YouTube, I went into full no contact after two weeks of texting and pity seeking, as you call it. Yeah, it's. I mean, at this point, it's cut and dry. She has a problem with you not making as much money, and more importantly, uh, this. You're probably telling all your friends, "Oh, she just cares about money." Correct me if I'm wrong. You probably didn't tell a bunch of people that she had problems with the intimacy, that she wasn't being satisfied. Whether you agree with that or that was just a cheap shot, she told you that. This is where you talk to a coach like myself or a therapist and you really dig a little deeper on things and get honest with yourself because it might have been more than just the money, but the money might have been the nail in the coffin, especially when you're like, I need to borrow money to even move out, right? And so your only option now is to be in no contact because pity seeking, being needy, crying profusely in front of her is just anti-attractive, okay? And I'm not saying crying is not okay. Just do it in private. Do it with someone that's going to hold space for you. Don't do it as a means for someone to feel sorry and get back with you. That's not going to work, right? She can feel compassion and empathy for you right now, but she's not going to be attracted to you at the same time. And that's, if you ever wanted to get back together, attraction is more of a key than empathy, so it's now been six weeks plus of no contact, and I still owe her money for the deposit. She hasn't texted me on this, but I know it's coming. Well, get out in front of it is what I'd say. Do you have the money? Okay, it says, I don't have it to pay back yet, but by next month. So this is what I would do. So this, this is really good. So this is a specific situation that I can give you specific advice on. Don't wait till you have the money. Send a text right now. This is not breaking no contact. This is a money issue, okay? This is adult issues. This is one of those things, if you don't address it, you're gonna push that person farther away and create more of a vice that's outside of just the breakup, okay? So what I would do is say, look, I know I owe you the money, and say it as short and curt and neutral as possible. Hey, I'm gonna have that money for you by the, by the end of the month. Just wanna give you a heads up. Leave it at that, text or email. Ironically, I got a promotion and get paid a little more and I am not getting paid for a couple of weeks, wasn't the company going under, it was just a payroll issue. Regardless of what it was, I don't believe she broke up with you just because of the payroll issue or the, or the two weeks. I think the intimacy issue was something, uh, and she might have just been annoyed with some other things. So if that's why she's breaking up with you, then you need to go into no contact, regroup yourself financially, get back on your feet, because if that's going to be one of the things that is going to break you guys up, it was going to become a problem a year from now or two years from now, because you're not, you're not going to catch up at 40% more pay, right? So what happens too is in the beginning of the rest, oh, this is cool, man. She's got money. She pays for dinner. She pays for vacations, right? But the reality is you're dependent on her more than she is on you. And so when she gets sick of you or there's a problem, She's not going to try to work it out because she's going to be better off on her own than you are, right? So like I said, text or email and just say, hey, I'm going to have that money for you by the end of the month. Because that, the thing is, people have this problem post-breakup that's like, oh, I owe them money or I owe them rent. That's a separate issue than playing 
uh, you know, a cat and mouse game of getting them back because you're really going to upset someone if you owe them a substantial amount of money and you just ignore it. If you don't have the money, at least address the fact that it's been a month, but I know I owe you and I know I'll pay you in two weeks. That goes a long ways. Um, so a couple of weeks wasn't going to go on. So he's talking about the payroll issue. Then it blew up to this. I'm wondering now if I should contact her about paying her back, if that exchange were to go well, could I ask her out? Absolutely not. Don't ask her out. Just neutrally say as short as possible, hey, I'm going to have your money in two weeks for the studio. I appreciate you helping me out. Leave it alone. She's like, oh, how have you been? Or if she says, you know, she asks you some comforting questions, say, I've been good. Keep it really short and neutral. If she gives you a compliment, if she was to say, I miss you, I don't see that happening in, in this situation based on what you told me. But if she was to say that, say, I miss you too. I'm doing really well. Don't jump into like, let's go out. If she wants to start talking to you or create some interaction, you can go there. But don't go jump into because from what you told me at the beginning of this breakup, you were highly emotional. You're on edge. You still want her more than you want. You know what I mean? You, you need to. She's not going to move back in with you anytime soon. So if you have an interaction with her, don't overdo it. Okay. So like I said, like, don't use the fact that you owe her money as a bridge to get back with her or talk to her. Just keep it about the money. And if she mentions something like that, like I said, try to be stoic and neutral. I believe this is sort of a different situation than most no contact issues. They're always different. There's always a nuance to them. That's why it's good to write out your story and send it in. The last thing she told me six weeks ago is that she just wanted space and she needed time to sort her life out and that maybe in the future we could reconnect, but not now. All right, so leave her alone, right? She needs to sort her life out. She has some issues, right? Namely her mom and her sister. Um, she needs to probably see some counseling or a therapist or some sort. You don't need to tell her to do that. Leave her alone, all right? Accept the breakup. The fact that she said you might reconnect in the future, don't try to be the one to reconnect. She's the one that broke up with you. If she wants to reconnect, she will. What do you think, coach, if she, if she left the door? It's like she left the door open, right? No. No, don't have that mindset. I would say no. Right now, when you moved out, you got your own studio, and you had to borrow money to do so, the, the, the door is not open. All right. You got a promotion. You're doing well. Get your finances right. Like I said, the minute you move out after living together, no one's going to get back together and start living together in a week or two weeks. That just doesn't work. That's a big step in a breakup. So you're going to you're going to be there for a little while. Right. And so right now you're going to have to sit in the breakup for a little bit and she's going to have to sit in it too. And it, the house is going to be the condo that you guys were in. is going to be a little bit more empty without you. And that's the best leverage you have. See what it's like without me. See what it's like without me when you're, you know, your mom's trying to manipulate you and you don't have someone to talk to see what is, is without me because right now she's got to see what the breakup's like. She wants, and she said, I need some time to sort her life out. Give her that time. Right. And in the meantime, Right. Any loose ends you have about yourself, insecurities, uh, you know, I'm overweight or I need this work on all those things, because if you do reconnect, you want to be at your best. Right. If any of you have a breakup story you want to share, send it into rightmac.com. If you want to book a live coaching session, go to rightmac.com. If you like this video, throw a like. If you don't throw a not like at least have an opinion.